today's Python video, we're going to be covering multimodal distributions. We're going to start by covering the different types of multimodal distributions, the, the graphs that can help us identify them, the problems associated with them, and then finally, how we can resolve multimodal distributions. All right, time to cover. Let's jump into some slides before we start coding. All right, so let's take a look at some uh, multimodal distributions. Uh, so what a multimodal distribution is, is a distribution with two or more peaks. And this is one that we're going to actually generate in this video. So all we have here is three peaks in marathon finish times. Let's say these are all males uh, running a marathon that are under the age of 30 or 34, right? So you have a peak right here of people that want to qualify for the Olympic trials. Then you have a peak of people over here that want to qualify for Boston, which is now under two hours and 55 minutes. And then you have like a, a general population of people uh, they're just your average marathon runners, right? So you can see that there's three peaks over here. Uh, multimodal can happen if in either continuous or discrete data. And each peak represents a mode where data clusters are on. Again, our three different times, the average marathoner, the Boston marathon time, and then also Olympic trials. So the presence of multiple modes suggests that the data may come from different groups or populations or have seasonal trends. And you can think of seasonal trends of like when people go shopping, right? So you have like Black Friday or you have weekends at the malls. That might get more traffic than a middle weekday. And I say that I, I don't have the data on shopping, but that would be my assumption. So there's a few different types of multimodal distributions. So if you hear of bimodal, that means there's two distinct pinks. So you could think of something like card present versus non card present transactions, right? An e-commerce store versus a brick and mortar. Another one might be heights, right? Male versus female heights. A trimodal distribution, a distribution with three distinct peaks. Uh, that could be the marathon finish times that I showed you guys. You have the elite that are trying for Olympic trials and you have the Boston marathoners and you have the average marathoner. And then you could have a multimodal, which is considered a polymodal also distribution. Either term is usable, right? And this is distributions with two or more peaks. So this also includes a trimodal distribution. So you can think of like customer purchasing habits, right? Certain weekends are going to be higher. Um, your holidays are going to be higher. Different things like that. All right. So the issue with multimodal distributions, so standard statistical methods, uh, like a normal distribution may not fit to multimodal data. Since multimodal data has multiple peaks using the mean or even median of a measure of central tendency, might not reflect the true structure of the data. Going back over here, right? That might not, if we if we calculate the mean, that's not gonna give us the entire picture of what's going on, right? Um, or even the median might not be the best bet, right? The mode or multiple modes might give you more information, but it's not always easy to determine. Uh, traditional measures like variance and standard deviation also can give you misleading information. And what happens is with multimodal distributions, you're often required to separate the data into meaningful subgroups uh, to analyze it better, right? Uh, with some multimodal data, sometimes the peaks not, might not be obvious. And I'll show you some Python code that we could use to help find our peaks. All right, so how do we find our distinct groups? So there's a few different ways. Number one is plotting the data. So, histogram with a KDE, empirical CDF, island plot. We're gonna plot all these in the video. Uh, you can also analyze the modes and find the peaks. I'll show you a way that we can do that also with scikit-learn in this video. And then there's clustering techniques. Now, I'm not gonna cover the clustering techniques in this video, uh, the Gaussian mixture modeling or k-means clustering. I feel like they need to have their own videos. So I'll have a few of those on the channel within a month or so of recording this video. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys find those helpful. All right, so with this background out of the way, I think we're ready to start coding in Python through an example. All right, so let's get started. Let's bring in a few imports and dependencies. So import numpy as np, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Then what we're gonna do is import seaborn in, import seaborn as sns, oops, sns, and then from scipy, dot signal import find peaks. All right, and uh, those out of the way, get started. Let's set up a random seed. So np.random seed, that way you guys can replicate what I have in this video. We'll say that random seed is 26. So we'll pass that in. 
and then uh, let's start off. And what we're gonna do is go over that example I showed you guys. We're gonna look at marathon runners, and this could either be considered a trimodal or multimodal. But let's do that. So uh, what we'll have over here is elite runners. I'm gonna say equals np dot random dot normal, and then pass in a few values. We'll pass in one thirty nine, five in three hundred. All right, and then what we'll do is we'll copy this, and we'll have also amateur and recreational. So amateur, R, and then we'll say recreational. So recreational, and instead of one thirty nine for amateur, we'll put one eighty because the three hour cutoff. That's what a lot of amateur runners want to try to get. Used to be Boston qualifier, but no longer is the case. And we'll do 270 minutes for uh, recreational. Uh, it's a little bit over a four hour marathon. I think most people can run that if they put in effort. So uh, yeah, let's run all these over here. And speaking of marathons, Chicago just opened up. I should uh, try to jump in there. Although I don't really run marathons now, I run ultras, but we'll do marathon times and uh, we'll pass all these in here. We'll concatenate them. So np dot concatenate, concatenate, and just throw all three of these in here like this. We'll like that and pass in elite runners. Pass in our amateur runners, and then we'll pass in our recreational runners. All right, and now what I want to do is I want to plot this out, and. Let's do that. So we'll say is plt dot figure figure. We'll say fig size equals ten six. All right. And then sns dot hist plot. Pass in marathon times. Then what we'll do next is set our bins. We'll say bins equal fifty kde, which is true, which really helps you out when looking at multimodal. And set a color color equals b. All right. Then. We can add in all of our fancy stuff. So plt.title, and we'll say distribution marathon times. Do our x label, plt.x label. We'll say finish time in minutes. plt.y label. We'll say frequency. All right, and then just plt.show. Show. It's taking a little bit longer uh, to build this out. There we go. All right, so you can see that we have all of our uh, finish times over here, right? And actually, this is a bit off. And the only reason why it's off, I meant to say 500 and 700 here. That's why I had my example code. I'll rerun this really quick for you guys. I'm like, why does it look weird? And yeah, that's why. Well, let me uh, restart this. We should also have a larger standard deviation. So 10 and 15. Man, I skipped a few steps. All right, just rerun these cells over here. 5, 10, 15, 300, 500, 700. Um, apologize. There we go. This looks a lot better. And obviously in, in a real marathon, you're going to have people that finish all these times, right? But again, this is just an example video. So why this is multimodal, right? You can see that we have a peak right here, a peak right here, and a peak right over here. Essentially, we should be getting three normal distributions in here, right? We have one, two, and then we also have three. So let's take a look at a few plots that would also show us this. And the first is the empirical CDF. So we can look at sns.ecdf, ecdf plot. And then what we're gonna do is pass in marathon times. So pass in marathon times. And uh, we'll do plt.title, we'll say empirical CDF of all marathon times. Then x label, so plt.x label time in minutes, plt.y label, plt.y label, so cumulative probability. And then lastly, shows, so plt.show. 
And what you'll see on here is you're going to see multiple essentially flat lines, right? So you can see, I know it's not exactly flat, but you can see we have this going up and then slows down, goes up, slows down, goes up, and then slows down. Now, what this shows us is that there's going to be multiple peaks associated with this. And our normal one should kind of look like a logistic regression. Uh, so what I'll build out now is I'll just go over here to ECDF. And instead of all marathon times, let's look at recreational runners because they had a 700 sample size. And this should look a lot better, right? And if we just go into recreational runners over here, you can see it's it literally looks like a logistic regression, right? So we start off. Boom, 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 then essentially a straight diagonal line, and then over here. And this is what you'll typically see with a normal distribution. Again, if there's multiple areas where it kind of flat lines, right, up, flat lines, up, this means that there's going to be multiple peaks, and you're going to be looking at something with multimodal. Now, let's take a look at another plot, which is really helpful, which is going to be our violin plot. Now, pretty easy, right? So I'll just go over here, and we'll set up a violin plot. And we'll say violin, well, let me grab all that, violin plots. And it should not be recreational, it should be our marathon runners. So I grabbed the wrong one. And we'll go over here and we'll say violin plot of all marathon runners. And then our X label is gonna be runners. And then our Y label is going to be time minutes. And what you'll see with this violin plot in comparison to one with a normal distribution, right? Um, you can see we have a peak right there, a peak right over here, and a peak right here. It, it looks like essentially if we go back over here, right, we take this KDE and we flip it 90 degrees, we have this right over here, right? It's essentially what we have. And if you want to look at what a normal violin plot looks like, Right, and we'll say violin plot of rec marathon runners, and then just grab in our recreational runners. Right, you'll see it's essentially a normal distribution. And uh, look, there we go. So again, we see our one peak versus a multiple peak. So another way that you can determine if we have a multimodal distribution or not. Okay, so. One of the things I also wanted to show you guys is how do we find those peaks, right? Like it's great looking at these charts and you can make inferences like, okay, well, I know this one's around like 175 to 180. Looking at this one over here, right? This is probably about like 265 or whatever else it is. Then you look over here, it's like, okay, this is about 137, right? But how do we actually determine those values? And technically, right, I showed you what these values are over here because we generated normal distributions. But, you know, if we didn't generate that data and we want to take a look at it, how do we do that? Well, SciPy gives us a really easy way to find the peaks. So what I'm going to say is SciPy find the peaks over here. And here's how we do that. So we'll say hist and we'll have bin edges. So bin edges like this. We'll say equals np dot histogram. Histogram. We'll have marathon time. So marathon times. And then also bins equal 50, bins equal 50. Then we'll have next, I'll say peaks underscore over here, equal find peaks. We'll pass in this histogram and we'll say height equals 50, height equals 50. And then what we wanna do next is we'll have peak times, so peak times, equals bin edges and then pass in peaks. All right. And then, oops, bins equals 50, not binds. Then all we do is print out our peak times. And what you'll see is we get 134, 176, 184, 264, and then also 283. So let's go, I'm just gonna copy these over here and let's take a look at our chart or our first one over here. And I'm just gonna comment this out. All right, so 134.46 over here. Yeah, okay, that's, that's around our first peak, right? 
Then 176, you can see over here we have over there, okay, 184. So it's also picking up probably this one right over here. Then 264 and 283, we go over here and it's picking up over here. So we can essentially use this line of code and get a few of the different peaks, which I think is pretty helpful, right? Again, you can utilize this down below, right? SciPy find peaks. And we can also utilize these different charts, right? We can use our histogram with the KDE. We can use the empirical CDF. We can also look at using our violin plot. And, you know, we go over here, time minutes, make those estimates. So just all tools in your arsenal to determine if something is a multimodal distribution or not. And again, I'll be making another video on how we can split up multimodal distribution. And uh, I think it'll be pretty helpful, but uh, I'll cover that another one. I hope you guys found this video on multimodal distributions helpful. And if you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're trying to reach 100,000 subscribers in 2025, and we have a long way to go. Now, if you want to watch even more statistics videos, I have a few linked down below as well as a playlist, and you can check out that playlist right over here.